surgical approaches to the acetabulum, anterior intrapelvic and ilioinguinal. This is from the OTA core curriculum resident lecture series version five. Uh, slides are by Dr. Jonathan Eastman and I'm Saka Brahman narrating. And this is the second part of uh, two videos out of this uh, slide deck. In the first video, we talked um, about uh, all the steps of the um, ilioinguinal exposure as well as the modified stopa slash anterior intrapelvic window. Um, and now we're going to talk a little bit about uh, actual fracture exposure. We're going to go through a case example and uh, also talk about the uh, closure of the um, approach. So, uh, you know, until now, fracture hematoma and tissues interposed in the fracture has been left untouched. Uh, this minimizes uh, creating new and ongoing bleeding while you're doing your exposure. Um, so uh, work through all your intervals at this point as needed. Now you're going to start to clean and irrigate the fracture appropriately. You might start to get into a little bit of more bleeding at this point. Uh, you can see here um, in the uh, uh, image up here uh, that you've got the lateral window. You've got retractors over the pelvic brim here. Um, so the pelvic brim's down here. Um, the uh, ASIS is here and the iliac crest. You can sort of see that uh, inner table, maybe there's a fracture line up in here. So you're getting exposure of the lateral window there. And um, we'll start to get a better sense of uh, how you're gonna get this fracture reduced. So uh, fracture reduction is gonna be based off the injury pattern and displacement, um, depending on where your um, where your fracture lines are. Uh, you can use a shans pin uh, in the gluteus medius pillar. Uh, you can use ball spike pusher type devices with you know, foot plates. Uh, there are different types of clamps and positions possible, not all being shown here. Uh, sometimes you may need to use an under contoured plate uh, to do a plate assisted reduction. Sometimes you can fix uh, the plate on one side of the fracture and then use a clamp on the other side of the fracture to sort of use the plate to help pull the reduction into place. Uh, but here you can see a few examples of uh, how you may have to use uh, clamps. Um, common plating surfaces are going to include superiorly uh, on the pelvic brim and superior pubic ramus. That's a very traditional place to put one of your, uh, like a 3.5 millimeter recon plate. Um, if you have um, more of a protrusio type um, displacement pattern, it may be very mechanically advantageous to have your plate uh, intrapelvic, sort of below the pelvic brim, uh, to really pr like sort of directly buttress that um, quadrilateral plate from displacing medially. So if you're going to do that, you may have to use the sort of posterior surface of the uh, pubic ramus, uh, be just inferior to the pelvic brim. So you're sort of 90 degrees now to that um, superior position, but that may give you a mechanical advantage. And that's where sometimes it's very helpful to use that medial, uh, expanded medial window or anterior intrapelvic window we talked about at length in the last uh, video to sort of come in at that, in that trajectory. Uh, the sequencing and placement of implants uh, is very important, uh, part of your pre-op plan. It's going to vary depending on the injury pattern you have. Um, independent screws are also possible. You just have to uh, uh, take care to ensure they're in the appropriate location so they don't get in the way of your uh, ultimate plate position. Um, so after your fixation is completed, you're certainly going to irrigate quite a bit. Um, you know, Lettronel, and since then we've learned that uh, you can minimize your uh, infection complications by placing uh, a drain in the space of retius in the retropubic space. Uh, drains can also be placed in the internal iliac fossa to prevent um, deep hematoma formation. Um, you will close the rectus insertion and linea alba with um, interrupted suture. Uh, the lateral window uh, is also... Um, you know, repaired back anatomically. Um, this helps to set the ligament orientation and allows tension-free repair of the floor and roof of the inguinal ligament. Um, again, watch for your uh, lateral femoral cutaneous nerve unless you've already divided it. 
Um, as you close the lateral window, it's a layered closure. You're going to do the internal abdominal oblique first. Um, and then uh, you're going to then repair your external abdominal oblique back to the crest. Sometimes you have to grab a little bit of the uh, tissue over the uh, tensor uh, origin um, if you're having a hard time getting repair here. And then it should start to look like this as you're... Uh, repairing your tissues, and it should come together relatively anatomically. So for the middle window, uh, you want to repair the floor of the inguinal canal, uh, inguinal ligament. Now it's important here not to get this floor mixed up. So here's sort of the repair that they're doing, these two layers. And what sometimes will happen is that uh, you, you sort of, if you're not, if you're new to this, you're not really identifying that, and you end up repairing the external abdominal oblique to here. So that's not what you want to do. You want to sort of get the floor back repaired anatomically, and that's going to be, you know, getting this tissue, you know, back to here. And then, you know, the external abdominal oblique will, will go after that. So you have to get this repaired to the inguinal ligament. That's the other thing you may mix up. Some people will inadvertently get this tissue repaired to the external abdominal bleed because this there's not a lot of tissue between between this and the inguinal ligament so that's probably more common uh, error that can be made so make sure you get that back repaired anatomically it's not something you have to necessarily tag as you're doing the approach you just have to be mindful um, that you, ins you you do the approach properly and then you do the closure anatomically as well uh, you're going to repair the roof of the canal by getting that external abdominal oblique fascia back together. Um, again, avoid injury to the inguinal nerve. And uh, you're going to then complete your fascial closure all the way back to the ASIS. Um, so consider reattaching subcutaneous tissue back down to fascia to minimize dead space. This is sort of your scarpus fascia. Uh, superficial drain is... Um, if needed, uh, not not often required, uh, and then skin closure. And you can see it's a pretty large incision, um, which uh, is going to take some time to close. So do take your time. Let's go through an example. So here's a 28-year-old female, uh, motor vehicle crash, patient had left hip pain. You can see there's an acetabulum fracture, the hemodynamically stable. Um, so we'll go through the imaging here. You can see there's disruption of the... Um, uh, ileoischial line, uh, iliopectineal line, uh, perhaps more displacement um, uh, seen uh, posteriorly. But uh, as you go through these images, you see you're probably dealing with um, uh, both column acetabulum fracture, possibly anterior column, posterior hemitransverse. But um, you can see that uh, there's wide displacement of the iliac wing uh, involving anterior column. You have quadrilateral plate involvement, posterior column involvement. So um, given that there's really no uh, articular surface remaining uh, on the sciatic buttress, uh, this, and this is a very classic appearance of um, uh, associated both column fracture. Here they're naming each of the fragments for you, the anterior column fragment, posterior column fragment, uh, and there's that sciatic buttress of the intact ilium. So, all the fragments are separate from the intact ilium. Uh, the ilioinguinal approach is a very uh, commonly used approach for the sort of classic associated both column fracture patterns. It allows exposure of all fractures. It's necessary uh, to kind of you know get your exposure, clean out the fracture sites, get your place uh, implants placed. So, this could be a strategy working your way from the outside in meaning working your way from out, you know, out here uh, and then sort of in, into this direction. So um, if you can get that iliac wing fragment um, reduced to the intact ilium posteriorly, that's sort of your sort of constant fragment, um, that could be a good start. Um, you can then place a pelvic brim plate and crest screw uh, to buttress the column and link that anterior column to the intact ilium. You can then work on the posterior column, which remember from the ilioinguinal approach, you can get some exposure down here. Um, 
and uh, get that reduced to the anterior column. And then you would want to potentially place screws from the pelvic brim uh, down into the posterior column um, and then maybe an intrapelvic plate uh, to buttress. So let, let's see how we might do that with the ilioinguinal approach. So that's our sequence. So thinking about that, you can see um, screw fixation or lag screw fixation of the um, of that iliac wing fracture. Okay, so here's a lag screw up here. Um, here you can see um, this may actually be um, this may be osteotomy exposure and osteotomy was not something we didn't talk about. This can give you great um, this sort of Remember the ilio, the um, ilio, uh, the inguinal ligament uh, comes down in this direction and uh, it's somewhat fixed. It doesn't really, um, it's, it doesn't allow you to retract, you know, uh, that much. But if you release its insertion on the ASIS, possibly by doing an, an, an ASIS osteotomy, um, then you can really mobilize that medially. Um, and that can expand your um, your exposure. But anyhow, it looks like a lag screw fixation here. Um, you can then see that there are independent lag screws fixing to the posterior column. Here is a uh, pelvic brim plate, okay? Uh, and then here is that, um, I believe, intrapelvic plate, possibly placed through an uh, anterior intrapelvic window. Let's look at our other images. You can see some drains here. So here's that um, sort of intrapelvic plate here. You can see nice reduction of that posterior column. And um, this, this, this plate here may have been placed through that modified um, medial window. So you can see each fixation device here, each technique serves a purpose. And you can see a nice reduction and fixation of this uh, both column fracture on your, on your Jude views. So we're going to end there, and um, uh, that is it for the anterior uh, intrapelvic and ilioinguinal approaches. Thanks.